The Egyptian-born businessman who owned, amongst other things, Harrods and Fulham Football Club has died at the age of 94. In fact, there was a lovely statement put out by Fulham Football Club. They paid tribute to their former owner and chairman. Of course, part of the reason why he's a well-known figure um, is because of his son, Dodi, who was dating Princess Diana at the time of their deaths, which was 26 years ago, um, almost, almost 26 to years to the day since they died in Paris. Joining us now, a friend of the programme, former Chief Secretary to the Treasury and a man who knew uh, Mohammed Al-Fayed well, David Meller. Morning, David. Good morning. What, what's your reaction? I, I must say, I knew, uh, I knew Mohammed Al-Fayed too, and I feel sad. Well, I, I don't feel remotely sad. Uh, Fayed died age 94, which proves that the good die young, you know. And um, I think that he was uh, a deeply corrupt uh, man who specialised in corrupting others. And a number of members of parliament were brought down by him because of the peculiar British rule that it was not a crime to offer a bribe to a member of parliament, but it was a crime for the member of parliament to take it. He was a serial liar, you know, a competition between him and Boris as to who was the worst liar you'd ever met, but it had been a very interesting one, actually. But where, I mean, let me just give you a few examples that still make me laugh, although they weren't very funny. When, I, when Fayed, of course, who called himself Al Fayed to give himself a bit of class, was trying to buy Harrods, he had to prove his wealth. Now, we know that his wealth came from money borrowed from the Sultan of Brunei for reasons that uh, were not fully disclosed to the Sultan of Brunei. And what he hoped to do was to be able to buy Harrods and then, um, lo then take out loans based on Harrods and repay uh, the Sultan. And um, he was um, a master at doing that kind of thing. Uh, and when he was asked, and I, I checked this out because Professor Sir Roland Smith, was the chairman of the company that owned uh, Harrods, and he was a friend of mine. And I remember putting to him uh, that it had emerged subsequently that Fayed, who owned the Ritz uh, Hotel, not the one in London, but the one in Paris, had apparently claimed, as how he was establishing his wealth, that uh, he owned the rights to Ritz crackers. Remember Ritz crackers? Mm, yes. And and they had to pay him, the manufacturers of Ritz crackers, had to pay him a licensing fee uh, in order to be able to use that name. And uh, that was, you know, one of his sources of great wealth. I mean, rubbish from beginning to end. But I said to Russell Smith, did you and your board believe him? And he said, yes. I mean, he was certainly a, a, a you know, good wheeler dealer, if nothing else. Oh, no, I think he was worse than that. You know, you could be a wheeler dealer, but honest. I, I think that Fayed was fundamentally dishonest, fundamentally dishonest. Uh, and he really was somebody who, um, of course, was almost too dishonest for his own good. I mean, he couldn't even get a British passport. Almost anybody these days can get a British passport, but Fayed, Fayed couldn't. And I think the trail of corruption that he left, you see, I was told um, very early on by a, a very, very senior person, if you've got any sense, David, you will not have anything to do with Fayed. And if you have to see him in the course of business, you do not accept any hospitality and you just stay away. And I kept, I'm not always the wisest of people, but I, I took that advice. Others who did not fell into his trap and a number I'm not going to embarrass these people. One or two of them were friends of mine. Um, so there's no point in raking over their misery. But a number of members of parliament had their lives destroyed by Fayed, who was totally cynical about it and who didn't care uh, what effect he had on other people. And I also feel that Princess Diana would still be alive if it wasn't for Fayed. What Fayed did was offer her the thing that he recognize with that instinctive recognition that the, the corrupter of people knows what people want and need to be corrupted. What she needed was some replication of the way of life she'd had 
uh, as a member of the royal family. So every, she was lavished with everything, uh, of course, including chauffeur driven cars and all the rest of it. And of course, she ends up in a, in a, in a Mohammed Fayed provided chauffeur driven car, driven by a man called um, Henri Paul, who was high as a kite. And he couldn't manage uh, getting down into that underpass in Paris. And the rest is a tragic history. But if she hadn't fallen in to the grip of Fayed, she'd be alive today. But it wasn't just Princess Diana, was it? He did a lot of charitable things, which, um, which got him talking to people like the Queen. Lots of pictures in today's newspapers of him hobnobbing with all sorts of celebrities, um, but very much inside the royal enclave. Yes, uh, although I, I, don't, I know for a fact that they didn't approve of him and that there was a great deal of concern that the kind of um, protection he was offering her was not adequate. But of course, they had only themselves to blame the royal family on that because she effectively tried to break away. And so nature abhors a vacuum and into that vacuum uh, went uh, fired. But uh, a mountebank but a man who was extremely good at getting people to believe that he was what he wasn't. That's the fact of it. He was never even, th until later on, that rich. What he did do was borrow or find ways in which he could take uh, money uh, in order to pursue the career of an international businessman, which he wasn't really qualified to do. I go back over the Harrods thing. He didn't have the money to buy Harrods. He had money that he was able to obtain for other purposes from the Sultan of Brunei. And that's what he used to buy Harrods on a basis once he owned Harrods, he could uh, take out loans against Harrods and repay the Sultan, which uh, I believe is what he did. Uh, of course, the one thing that he always wanted, as you touched upon, that he never got was citizenship to this country. He never got his hands on a British passport. Um, there were always accusations that that was some sort of racist policy directed against him. But, but clearly, David, you think, well, it was all his own fault. All his own fault. And by an interesting coincidence, I spent an exciting time on Thursday down at the new passport office in the docks, which uh, was very efficient. And anyone who goes in there to collect their passport uh, cannot leave believing there's any racial prejudice in the, uh, the handing out of British passports, um, because most of the people who are collecting their passports uh, were more obviously foreign than fired.